Full Knowledge Path Planning. There are several sea spaces that afford topological navigation. These sea spaces are visibility graphs, exact free space, Voronoi diagram, and approximate free space. There are four examples of these shown here. A visibility graph consists of all edges joining vertices that can see each other. Objects in the environment are polygons in either discrete or continuous space. The size of the representation and the number of edges and nodes increase with the number of polygons. Paths take the robot as close as possible to obstacles on the way to the goal. The length of the solution path is optimal and a sense of safety from obstacles is sacrificed for this optimality. One solution is to grow obstacles by the robot's radius or modify the solution path. Since the vertices are connected in a visibility graph, if the robot attempts to follow the path, there will be some edges that are not navigable. The solution is to grow the obstacle by the size of the robot in order to eliminate this problem. One other solution would be to engage a local control strategy, such as obstacle avoidance, when a threshold is reached and then return to the path once the obstacle is cleared. Metal maps. A metal map transforms space to convex polygons. The polygon represents a safe region for the robot to traverse. The first step is to grow obstacles to be the size of the robot and treat the robot as a point. Construct convex polygons between pairs of corners or edges and convert the polygons to relational graphs. Some of the challenges are that there is not one unique set of polygons. You can't create this map with sensor data and the robot cannot recognize corners and edges or the middle for navigation. Path relaxation may help with some of these challenges. Generalized Voronoi graph. A GVG can be created as a robot enters a new environment as a topological map. A Voronoi edge is equidistant from all points. The point where Voronoi diagrams meet is known as the Voronoi vertex. A Voronoi diagram is a complete road map method that tends to maximize the distance between the robot and obstacles. The local control, control strategy would be to follow the middle of the hallway. Paths on the Voronoi diagram are usually far from optimal in the sense of the top of the total path length. The Voronoi diagram has the advantage in executability. Voronoi diagrams. This is easy for a robot to follow because of the implicit local control strategy, which is to stay equidistant from all obstacles. If the robot follows the Voronoi edge, it will not collide with any obstacles and there is no need to grow the obstacles. One important weakness is in the case of limited range localization sensors. When the robot follows center, it may not detect the walls if they are limited range. This has been used to conduct automatic mapping by finding and moving on unknown Voronoi edges and then constructing a consistent Voronoi map of the environment. We can also have discretized Voronoi diagrams. Here is an example of converting a continuous Voronoi diagram to a discrete Voronoi diagram created from a robot taking discrete measurements or a tessellation of the space. And here are a couple more examples. Exact cell decomposition. Use cell decomposition to discriminate between geometric areas or cells that are free and those that are occupied by objects. Divide space into simple connected regions called cells. Determine which open cells are adjacent and construct a connectivity graph. Find cells in which the initial and goal configuration state lie and search for a path in the connectivity graph to join them. From the sequence of cells found with an appropriate search algorithm, compute a path within each cell. For example, passing through the midpoints of cell boundaries or by sequence of wall following movements. Exact cell decomposition. An important aspect of cell decomposition is the placement of the boundaries between the cells. If the boundaries are placed as a function of the structure of the environment, then the method is exact cell decomposition. If decomposition is an approximation of the actual map, the system is an approximate cell decomposition. In approximate cell decomposition, a regular grid superimposes a 2D Cartesian grid over the world space. If there's an object in the area, that element is marked as occupied. This is called an occupancy grid. 
Grids can be four connected or eight connected. Regular grids suffer from digitization bias because if an object falls into any part of a grid cell element, it is marked as occupied. The boundaries of cells is based on geometric criticality. The cells are completely free or occupied. What matters is the robot's ability to traverse from each free cell to adjacent free cells. Efficient computation in that case of a large sparse environment. We are going to do a lab similar to this with metric path planning. However, approximate cell decomposition is used rarely in mobile robot applications due to complexities in implementation. Approximate cell decomposition, C-space representations can be converted to graphs so that the path between the initial node and the goal node can be computed using graph search algorithms such as A star or D star. The search algorithms require visiting every node which is computationally tractable for a Voronoi diagram but computationally expensive for a regular grid. The A star search algorithm is the classic method for computing optimal paths for holonomic robots. A star evaluates each node and the set in front at each point in time and then chooses the best one and throws away the other choices. And finally, we have adaptive cell decomposition. Adaptive cell decomposition or quad trees avoid wasted space because it is a recursive grid. If an object falls into a part of a grid, it divides the element into four. A 3D quad tree is called an octree. One of the most popular techniques for mobile robo robot path planning. Cell size is not dependent upon objects in an environment, so narrow passageways may be lost. Low computational complexity for path planning though, and the fundamental cost is memory because the grid must be represented in entirety. Sparf environments contain few cells consuming dramatically less memory. And this concludes today's lecture on topological Path planning. Have an awesome day.